On this video, I'm going to show you how I embed ILT. Now this, is, this is a range of equipment that I've uh, started to use in my lessons. It includes uh, iPads, laptops, digital cameras, uh, a flip video and a smartphone. And what I found is that it actually does enhance what the learner is gaining from the lesson itself in terms of enjoyment, but also in terms of teaching and learning. I use them primarily so that I can capture their work so that I've got evidence of progression, so I, I photograph everything they do in a lesson. Uh, and then I will then put that on their virtual learning environment, which I've created for them, which we can see on the screens here. Using the virtual learning environment means that they can also share in that uh, ability to look back on their work and see how they're progressing, or perhaps even where they're still struggling. So between the two of which we can have a dialogue, which can go back for some of my learners three or four years because their material is there, I don't take anything off because if they do keep coming back to me as they do in community learning classes especially, we can have quite a long story of how they've got on in the class and that also helps me to think well what's new that we could do with that person who's been coming back for three or four years. So I've got a, a, a range of equipment here which I know mostly learners have themselves although perhaps different versions. Uh, the reason I uh, use this equipment is, as I explained earlier, it's to help them to share the journey with me in terms of how are they doing, what have they done well, what have they not done so well. I will show them very simply how to use their smartphone as a camera, because all smartphones come with uh, a very simple camera, but they all have built into them this very simple device where it divides the screen into nine equal parts, and that's actually part of a, a very old traditional compositional rule called the rule of thirds or golden section. And that's a key, key part of learning if you're doing visual art courses. And they actually exist on most smartphones or small compact digital cameras. If they've got something more uh, complex like this, then it's not about how to use your camera, it's just how to about use those two or three elements within your camera that are pertinent to the learning that you're doing with me in the class and increasing your skills. I also use a smart uh, camera called a flip camera and I don't ask the learners to use that, I use that myself and that is to capture evidence of some of the soft skills that is quite hard to record as a tutor. Um, that's one of the reasons why I really started to use technology in the first place is because I wanted to know how can I ca capture all these things I'm being asked to do as a tutor that is actually quite hard to evidence on pe with pen and paper and say lesson plans or schemes of work or in my reflections which I'll write up before I put them up to the Institute for Learning's website for my CPD. But with a flip camera it's nice and easy. Took a few sessions to get the learners to ignore it and that was great and for me to get used to it but uh, it, it really is a powerful tool for capturing all sorts of things and then we can share those one minute two minute videos maximum to then say well how are your soft skills coming? You've come to me in the first term and you said you, you're not so sure about things, you're a bit lacking in confidence about talking, probably because of your, your own uh, lack of confidence of your skills. In the video you can see how you've grown. Uh, I use the flip video particularly for uh, what we call peer-to-peer -peer critiques and that's where I get the learners to work in pairs, I'll show them first. And uh, there's a video later which will take you through that very easily. Uh, but you, then you can repeat that filming maybe twice a term, maybe three times if the learners are used to it and you've got a bit of time. For it. And then you've got a, a log of how they've progressed with all those soft skills, which is active listening, it's uh, an, using analysis, being critical in a, pr in a relevant way, and being able to share with your peer uh, things that help you both to learn according to the outcomes that we're trying to get from the course. And the reason I use ILT in the class so much, although it's only a few minutes of every lesson if you put it all together, it's not only just for my benefit, although there are some great uh, benefits for me as a tutor in terms of efficiency. What I'm more interested in is what the learner can get from that. How can that enhance their learning within the classroom, within that subject? And I've started to see over the two or three years that I've been doing this, gradually increasing the amount of technology I use in the class as I got more confident because it wasn't easy at first for me but also so the learners can build up their confidence and also their understanding of it. I started to see real evidence of how it was affecting their learning uh, as much as my teaching. One of the examples uh, that's, well there was a few examples that stood out for me. Uh, one of them uh, is an elderly man who's in one of my classes, he's been coming for about two three terms perhaps and he doesn't really do technology, he says. But he has a daughter in Singapore 
And uh, one of the ways that he's told me he's now using it and what's motivated him to actually use the blog that we have in class, which is our version of a virtual learning environment, is to just keep in touch and to share what he's doing with his daughter. And at the end of a lesson now, he will come to me sometimes and say, you will put that on, won't you? Because, you know, I'm, my daughter's looking forward to the next one. And I say, of course, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so that's, for me, that's a really nice way of looking at how a learner can, who's technology slightly uh, fearful and not sure how it's going to work for them, actually using something within his sort of family situation to then move on and then see, well, actually, I'll see how I can use this from the learning as well. Another example that springs to mind is, uh, and this is several uh, learners will say this now, is that they've started to rely on the, on, on the technology that we're using in the class. I use the, a VLA, as I said before, and on there I put all of their work every week that they do it. And I also put on resources about how to do things, little tips, where to do some research or so on to help with that particular project. And they're starting to tell me that that's a feature that they actually use. Because one of the problems I've had and a lot of people have in community learning is some learners don't have the time to do much between lessons, so they lose the learning, it dips. So how do you keep that momentum going, particularly over the breaks, such as Easter and summer? So I'm actually getting learners saying to me, can you put something on the blog, you know, a couple of project ideas or some resources we can use for the summer? And for me, that's the holy grail. That's the, okay, you're driving the technology now, not me. Uh, although I'm mindful of why I'm doing it and what I think you can get from it. For most of the two or three years that I've been introducing and using ILT in the classroom, I found that really it's me that has to do a lot of the work with the technology. What I'd really like to see next is that the learner start doing things with the technology. Uh, now I realise for some learners that's going to be a bit of a harder task than for some others. But as a group, and um, we work as a team in my classes, we can start to help each other to do that. So what I really want learners to do is whether they've got an iPad or an old computer or a smartphone, whatever they're comfortable with, or even if they do it in the library, which some of them do because they don't have PCs at home, is to do some very simple things to get them actually using it and being active with the, with the use of technology. Maybe adding comments to some of the pictures that, of their peers so we can extend the peer-to-peer -peer critiques that I do in class with the flip video and maybe getting them to post some simple comments. I have had a little try of that and I've realised it's going. I'm going to need to think about that a little bit more, but it, it will be done, I'm sure, once I've got a few, perhaps, leaders within the classroom to, to show them. Uh, what I'm really talking about. So I want to see learners moving on to, if you like, another level uh, uh, and on the basis of what they'll gain from doing that. I use a variety of different I ILT in my teaching to enhance the learning. One example would be in the form of quizzes. You can do this for English and maths. And this is one example I'm going to show you just using the iPad. You could also, though, use this obviously on smartphones or laptops or if the learners have a computer at home. One of the things that also makes sure that they're aware of, if they don't own an iPad or a smartphone, although most people own one, one or other, and they don't have computer access at home, that they have the libraries that they can access free and at, at, at as well. And that often gets talk going because I'll say, you know, it's only two pound a year, and most people can afford that. And so they can also use Skype and things there. So we talk about all those different things that we can use to enhance the learning. So I'll show you one example now on the iPad. One of the websites I use is this Study Maths, and I'll show that in a little while. But one of the pitfalls I just want to mention is you can tell learners to Google to get sort of, for example, a quiz on fractions, a quiz on percentages, a quiz on conjunctions. One of the pitfalls, though, if that is, they don't necessarily get it pitched at the right level. So what I tend to do is say, yes, you can use those additional resources, but if you wait for me to signpost you with, and I do that in each session, give them a quiz link at the end of the session to go to, that reduces the likelihood that they're going to be looking at something which is either not challenging enough or is too challenging for their level. So I'll show you just this one on averages, which will be pitched at level one and level two, functional maths. The one I'm going to show you today then is averages and range. So from the website, which I would give the learners the link, they would just click on averages and range. And then as I say, they can do this on the smartphone instead or laptops if they have them at the centre. Once they get this next page up, you'll see that there's a few questions. These are all based on averages and range. So we would have covered, for example, the concept of mean and range in the class previously. So this can be used just as a consolidation at the end of the class, or alternatively it can be a start of activity the following week. 
just to just check that they've actually remembered what we did the previous session. So there's a f four questions here. You would just put your answer in here. So I'm just going to put a, a different answer in. You'd obviously show them how to put the numbers on the keyboard when you're dealing with maths. I'm just going to put a random answer in. Obviously, the learner would take their time to work that out, get the answer. Then you can either check it as you go, or you can do them all at the end. So if we just check that one now, once it's been checked, the learner can obviously look and see, oh, well, I was correct, I was incorrect. In this case, they were incorrect. If they're doing this in the class, I can then go over and question why they think they've got it wrong, and also in pairs they can do that. Once they've compared scores and they've had that discussion, they might then go back and change their answer, which they can do. So they can just go back in and they can then change their answer. A lot of learners, this is very important because they, want, they don't just want to see the wrong answer and that it's corrected. They won't actually put their answer in themselves. So they can just change their answer once they understand where they've gone wrong and how to get the correct answer. Then they will just work through each one. If they were doing this at home, which is what I encourage them to do, and I know one of the, the main ways I try to sort of enhance the IT is rather than giving them see, a, a handout, which I would have done traditionally in the past, I can just give them this quiz link and they can do this in their own time at home. And the beauty is they're such short little quizzes. They are just five, ten minutes. It doesn't look as much to do as giving them a, like a full page handout with 20 questions on. And they do say that they do enjoy doing them. And it does lead them to, to for example, one group started up a revision group. And what they would do is on their smartphones in the pub where they would meet up, they would all do a quiz each and compete against each other which is um, obviously very, very competitive and gets the spirit going. So that's one of the real good uses of IT. And I find that it does enhance the learning because traditionally what I've tended to do sometimes is use IT reflecting now for the sake of it, just to sort of put it in there to show that I'm using IT. But now I've found that by just doing little quizzes and starter activities like this, it can actually enhance the learning rather than just doing it for learning's sake. And I think that's been one of the most valuable assets I've found with these little quizzes and things. And there's loads of these on the internet that are all totally free. And just as a tutor, if you're aware of your curriculum and what you want, what your learning aims are, you can say and post them to a, an effective quiz for that particular learner, which is very good for meeting smart targets because you can individualise it, particularly at the end of the course when they've all got different learning needs to revise. You can give them all different links to follow four and five quizzes each and they don't mind doing them because as I say they're just short bite-sized activities and I think that's really useful. Um, I'd like to demonstrate how I have introduced um, ILT and how I've embedded this within my session. So firstly as you can see on the screen um, we're discussing um, food groups. We have researched them um, previously and then what we've got the learners to do uh, within the group is this would be displayed on the whiteboard, sorry, um, and this would come up on the, the board itself and each of the learners, uh, one usually from each of the groups, would come up to the board and click on one of the icons and it would bring up this display that you can see here. So once the learner has clicked onto this particular screen, you can see um, there are a number of icons where they would proceed to click on the icons and a number of reasons for fruit and vegetables would appear. In addition to using the interactive whiteboards within the sessions, I also use other ILTs such as iPads and interactive magnetic boards which the learners really love using because it allows them to fully participate in the sessions. The use of IT in lessons is really good. It, I've been in lessons where in the past where you just don't have the use of IT and it just ends up really boring, I can't connect with it. It's not like a part of my culture, which IT is of now. But in lessons that it is, uh, IT is in it, you can have fun, you can connect with it. It's a lot more like better in general. I'd like to share with you how I embed ILT into my lessons and also how I have it available for students outside of class. I started working on this about a year and a half ago. It wasn't very easy at first, but I now use a site called Weebly, and the, they are very easy to use to build a website. I've actually got two websites. Um, the first one I built was 
for use with, for, by my students um, inside class and outside of class. At Bencham Grove, unfortunately, we can't get internet access and also we don't have a smart board. So I would take in my laptop or my um, iPad and I'd be able to show them on that. And I would have to put things actually onto my laptop, but then when they got outside of class, they could go onto the website through their browser. So I asked my students what they would like on the website and they were very keen on the idea of video resources. So over the months, I have started putting on various uh, demonstrations of me working. I do this on my workbench at home. This is a video I made about a technique called drop soldering. My learners particularly enjoyed this because it's quite a tricky thing to see because you're working at a very small scale. And in a class with 12 or 14 learners, they really can't get close enough to see what I'm doing. So they can go home and they can watch this at their leisure and play it as many times as they want. They can freeze frame it if they want to study one particular frame. At the moment here, I'm just describing how I'm working in the metal copper because it's easier for them to see the silver solder run. But I'm stressing the point that they should never put copper through their ear for health and safety reasons. So that was a good opportunity to put that in. It's a, a, not a clean metal. This is just one of a number of videos I've done on the basic techniques. As I say, I'm going to try and do some on the more advanced techniques over the summer break. My learners have really enjoyed this, and if there's anything particular they want me to do, they will tell me and I will put it on for them. Um, to help them watch it in class, I have to bring in my laptop or my iPad, but I think I'm going to get a screen next term, so that will be absolutely wonderful. Um, they have enjoyed that technique very much. They also enjoy the basic ones such as cutting metal, uh, basic solder joints, how to make the various fixings, and it's always a good way to slip health and safety in. The reason I have my videos on here on the Weebly website rather than on another more widely available website is I was worried that people might see these and copy them and of course I haven't had them in class to drum health and safety into them so although the Weebly website will only allow me to put quite a small snapshot of video in it does focus my mind on getting over the important parts and not waffling a few months ago, it was suggested that I formed another website um, to be used when learners are enrolling online. When they click on one of my courses, it should directly take them to the link to Bencham Grove Silversmithing. Um, they can look at each class, and on that class, they will see what learners have made in previous years, so they can judge the sort of things that they'll be studying. Also, for my renovation group, I have put on pictures of all the designs that they've done, the maquettes they've done in uh, pewter and brass, and as we, the project um, goes along, we're adding up the first cutting of the metal, marking out the patterns, and hopefully we'll have some fabulous finger plates to show everybody in a few months' time.